Good evening. All right. I'm very happy to see all of you here. My name is Dr. Albadile Kambong, and I am uh, the coordinator of the IAS film series. And I see that the advert about the female assassin has everyone wanting to see what in the world is going on here. So we have our own Black Panther Babetta here. And we are pleased to have the director of the film. This is Onwara Abua, out of Nigeria, but based in the UK right now. And amazingly, he, out of his own pocket, flew into Ghana for this film screening. He's been at Fespaco, he's been at film festivals throughout the world. He never pays his own way. But he said that this is his audience. This is who he made the film for. So if we can give him a round of applause. <laughs> and tech issues have us running just a few minutes behind, but if he can say a few words, and then with no further ado. We are looking at the overflow. Now what we do at UGRC is that we get nice and cozy, and some of the students sit up front, some sit in the hallway. The other option that we have would be to have another screening, and we may uh, do that either back to back or try it for tomorrow, but we'll work out those details. So uh, with no further ado, we'll have Onwara uh, introduce the film, and we'll start watching. Hello, hello, hello. First of all, let me thank everybody for coming. Um, this film was made, we shot the film in 2015, and uh, it premiered in 2016. I went all around Africa uh, during various film festivals and um, cultural events. Now, fortunately for us, we made a film that we thought was a film for the African people, particularly the African youth. But for some reason, we never were able to capture that audience at the screenings that we went to. So when uh, Dr. Kampon reached out to me and said that there might be a possibility to screen it here, as we say in Nigeria, not in the apple, I had to come down. And I was so grateful that he was able to accommodate me. So I want to first of all thank the Institute of African Studies and all of you for coming out. So I think give yourselves a round of applause. For that. Um, and lastly, what I will say is, all those people who are in the overflow, I'm very grateful that you could come. And I certainly hope if there's a second screen in there, you'll come for that too, because I know you want to be comfortable and enjoy yourselves. But uh, I present to you Mona, okay? And I hope that you enjoy it, and I hope you stick around for the Q&A afterwards. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and lastly, yes. We may see there's a camera here. So being here, we are assuming that you consent to having your image and likeness as well as voice <laughs> produced um, for the virtual realm. Thank you very much. Any history professors in here that can give us history? I guess not. Okay. Amilcar Cabral. So basically, uh, if you if you know anything about what they call colonization, the Portuguese occupied the territories that are known as Guinea-Bissau. Cape Verde, Mozambique, and Angola. Now, Amilcar Cabral was the leader of the, I suppose, the uprising against the Portuguese in Guinea-Bissau and Cap Cape Verde as well, Cabo Verde. Now, he was a very, uh, very eloquent speaker, very good writer. He wrote a lot of books and, you know, some great speeches that really, if you're in this university, you really should find out more about. And um, anyway, he, he eventually started through peaceful protests and, and movements and eventually led to guerrilla warfare. So I wanted to make a film about his life. Now he, uh, I don't know if you saw that bit at the end, the caption. So in 1975, the Portuguese finally left Africa. Well, the army left Africa anyway. Okay, so they're, they're here in other ways, but the army officially left and colonization ended in those countries in 1975. Now, Amilcar Cabral unfortunately didn't see his country liberated. He was murdered in Guinea. I hope you know where Guinea is. It's next to Guinea Bissau. Okay? Now, Guinea, uh, Guinea had a leader called Sekou Touré. Does anyone know who he is? Okay. Okay, we'll get to someone. So, Sekou Touré, there's, there's, a, there's a conspiracy about whether or not Sekou Touré was involved in his murder. So, I wanted to make a film about him. 
Now, as far as inspiration, you see, I'm a filmmaker, and filmmakers often have no resources, because if you know anything about making a film, it's very labor-intensive, it costs a lot of money, requires a lot of people. So you tend to look in your surroundings. Now, I personally, I live in the UK. I couldn't really bring a crew out to Africa and do a film. So I looked at my surroundings, and I began to do some research. And if you, do, if you know anything about uh, the 1974, there's some key things that happened in Europe as well as in Africa. So in 1974, Europe started talking about this thing that is now called the European Union, right? which Britain is going out of. And part of the dangling carrot was the Portuguese, uh, Portuguese nations, which were basically a colony. You see, Portugal, when you compare them to the rest of the uh, European nations in Africa, they really didn't have much. They were a colony of Britain, and it was said at the beginning of the film. I don't know if you guys heard that. I know there were some technical issues. Now, Portugal uh, was basically, so the Portuguese Prime Minister, who was a dictator for a while, came to England. And that was actually a true story. All of that, when he came in, some of the things that were said, those were actually true stories. So when I found out that story, I found a way to link my own personal interests, let's say. You see, because if I was living in that time, I feel I would have been, I would have tried to assassinate Portuguese Prime Minister. And that's the reality. So in terms of inspiration, it was a mixture of different things. Wanting to do one thing, and then looking at how my surroundings <coughs> impacted what I could actually do. So I don't know if that answers your question. So you didn't understand. Were you here from the beginning? You were awake? <laughs> um, okay, well. So, sorry, remind me the question, the first part of your question. Because of, okay. Well, okay, so the reality is, she was, the catalyst for her doing what she did was the, her lover, right? There was a guy who was murdered who she was trying to be reunited with. And you know, with film, sometimes you try and paint a picture. You see, not everything has to be, okay, she did this because she went there. You know, there's a bigger picture at, at hand. There is the slaughter of people, and that's why we, we tried to set the background at the beginning so you understand what was going on with this Wiriamu massacre. Because this, these are things that you really need to, it's very important that you get clued up on some of the things that were said in this. Because if you understand the history, you understand that. Things were going on in the Portuguese, uh, co uh, occupied uh, nations in Africa. And uh, Mona was basically trying to do revenge on her. She was trying to commit, she was trying to, um, commit an act of revenge against the Portuguese for what they had done to her. And the biggest symbol of the Portuguese was the Prime Minister. And he happened to be in the city that she was living in. You see? So that was basically why she decided to do it. Um, now it ties into the next question, which I don't... 
What was the next yeah, question? If she succeeded. If she succeeded. Again, I don't know whether person, people are tall and they're blocking people's views, but if you look at the end, there was a bullet hole in her head. So I don't know if you saw that, if you didn't. Okay, so this is Mona, by the way. This is played by, amongst other things, my wife. So round of applause for her, please, if you don't mind. She, she, she unfortunately couldn't be here, so technology. Uh, last question was, just remind me. Yes, okay, so, um, okay, the best way for me to answer that question is, me personally, um, as an African people, I feel very bitter about what has been done to our people. And personally, especially if you look at the 1960s, 1970s, there was a lot of talk in radical circles about trying to do something about it. Black Panthers, not the Black Panther. Black Panthers, the Black Panther, Black Panther Party for self-defense. Okay. So what you had was people who were trying to physically do something and weren't necessarily successful. And so the point of why Mona wasn't successful at the end was to show that there was, it could have been a possibility that this happened, but it would have it happened behind closed doors and we wouldn't have seen it. And this is, the, this is true of many things in history. You see, History is always recorded by the person who's successful. The person who wins awards won't write down the history. So because many people were unsuccessful, the picture is always painted that this man came to England, was successful, left. But this could have happened. You see what I mean? What's the relevance of this movie in today's Africa? Because this looks, I don't know if it's from a history background, but I learned a lot from the movie, but in our contemporary Africa, what can we learn from this? Because people speak about neocolonialism. Can we learn something from this? If you say the fight or yeah, the fight continues, what are we fighting now? I want to know the relevance. So, my name is Deladem, and uh, I want to ask, why do you use love, the love as a conspiracy theory for the murder, you know, because uh, with, with uh, past colonial movies, you know, you see people losing something really much, like they are killing their entire leaders, their entire family clan, they are doing so many things, so why is it just uh, a boy, let me just call it a boy, a boyfriend girlfriend relationship, and you know, just the murder of one person could cause uh, murder to commit such an act. And uh, there was another thing in the movie, I don't know if there was a technical thing like a writing error or something, but Mona, after every exchange with the boyfriend, okay, just a paper letter, ends up burning the paper, okay, just because I, I was of the view that she doesn't want anybody sneaking up to her leftovers. So why did she particularly forget to burn the picture of the lady she took? The lady she, uh, she stole her identity, why did she burn the picture herself? Let me, let me start with the last question, and then you might all have to remind me of questions again because my memory is. Um, okay, so, all right. So, why do you use love as a motivation factor? How many people have married in here, or have a boyfriend or girlfriend? Would you say that's the most important person to you? Okay. Now also you have to understand the context, and maybe this is, are you a student? So okay, maybe, maybe some of this is uh, a little bit over your head at times because of maybe you don't really understand the context of what was going on at the time. So cell groups, you have these, assass even now you have them, but technology makes it look like they're doctors and lawyers. But you, have cell, you had cell groups at that particular time who would commit assassinations. And you don't leave a paper trail. You're absolutely right, which is why she burnt letters. Now, you have to also understand love and how love works. When love happens, you do irrational things. When things that, when things, you're smiling. I know there's a girl in your life right now. <laughs> so, so, so when love, when things happen in your relationship, you do irrational things at times. 
And somebody who's as careful as that can make mistakes. But these are subtle undertones of a film that if you understand characters, these are things that you could do. Um, question before that. Is that relevant? Is that question? Okay. How does this relate to modern day? Um, I mean, if you, know, if you know what's going on in Angola and Mozambique right now, in the same way the Portuguese left, they're coming back in different ways. If you look all around us right now, I think I can count five people, maybe 20 people at the most, who are wearing traditional African dress. So in a way, we're still under the same system, but we think that we have this uh, unshackled freedom, but the mental freedom we're still struggling with. So as far as uh, understanding post-colonial anything or neo-colonialism, it's the same colonialism, it's just a slightly different format. So that's, that's, for me, there's no major difference to anything except that now we can stand in this room, say a few things, a, few, a little bit more freely than we would have before, but it's the same system. I think there was one more question. Or was that it? Does that answer your question? Yeah. Questions for Moira, please. <laughs> Okay, please, I'm Obinawa. I want to know the role of the girl who came later after Mona had died. Yeah, because we can't see anything from her past linking to why she was able to kill the president or the prime minister at the end. was the girl murdered, like in the beginning? The her lover. How was he murdered? Was the woman at the end. Okay, you see her at the beginning in a very, what they call a montage. So I'm, I'm, I don't know, I wasn't here when that was going on, so I don't know whether there are any technical issues at that point. Sorry, that's my daughter, by the way. Sorry, say hi. Say hi. Hi. Why no? Okay. So, so, it's all good, no problem. So, um, so basically, oh, I forgot the question. Uh, <laughs> you see my daughter, every time she comes on, it confuses me. Uh, it's love, it's love, my brother, you see. Uh, sorry, just remember the question. woman at the end. Yes, okay, you see her very briefly at the beginning in what we call a montage. And I don't know if, I wasn't here, so I don't know if anybody else remembers seeing her. Very, the bit where there was, uh, there was a flashback to like a be uh, rape in the, and you see her very, it's subtle, it's very subtle, and it's deliberately subtle. It's not supposed to be, this is the woman, so you see her face, so you remember her at the end. It's subtle. Um, and um, to answer your question about why. Okay. I'm trying to understand. So why, she, why he was killed? Okay, they were trying to get information out of him. Okay. Um, now, if you remember the, the white man at the end, the one who was killed as well, um, so he was, he was basically what they call a fixer, okay, he was a, or a tracker, excuse me. Tracker is somebody who goes and looks for people and has them killed. Again, they exist today, they may not look, in, they may not wear leather jackets, but they exist, believe me. Uh, so he was basically looking for this guy to get information in order to get closer. You see, because before any sort of political figure goes to a country, investigation and intelligence has to be gathered. Now, especially at this time, you have to understand this is the time when they call the Cold War. Anybody heard of the Cold War? I hope you all have. Yeah. Okay, this is the Cold War period when all sorts of things were going on and people were very skeptical about people called communists and things like that, right? So anybody who opposed any sort of view, just like some people would assume we do it here in Africa, it was going on in Europe and the United States. So that guy was basically sent out to do intelligence, get rid of any uh, potential damage and then uh, clear the way. So he killed that guy because he wanted to get information about Mona's character, which is why he showed her the picture. But because of love, he didn't tell he, he didn't tell the guy what where she was. Okay, M Mona question. <laughs> okay, so those of you who are here as students, I have a question for you. And my question is, are any of you inspired to create art in a revolutionary way? Is anyone here? I'm looking at one person who I already know the answer for, but the, those who I don't know, 
because this is a film, you know, where Onuara has gone out of his way in order to show the possibilities, right? So some films are just like cutesy, you know, boy meets girl and that's it, or whatever. But he's actually showing a scenario. He's showing you something that can inspire you to fight for the freedom. So here we see Mona. The love piece is the key piece that sets her off. But you see she's already part of a revolutionary cell. You understand? She's already doing revolutionary work. That's how she has the contacts to be able to carry out the plot. That she needs the gun. She needs this. She needs that. She needs to get into the embassy. So she's already doing this revolutionary work. So what Onwara has done is actually shown through his art a deeper message, right? So no matter what you're doing, some of you are not filmmakers, but whatever you're doing, that you can infuse what you're doing with a revolutionary message, something that is pertinent to African people. Now, if I ask anyone, okay, are you a revolutionary right now? I may not get all the hands, but I was listening at the end, and I could tell who the audience was going for. <laughs> Because we identify with those who are fighting for rights. We identify with those who are fighting for justice. We identify with those who are fighting for African people, right? And that's what art can do, right? So I want us to just think about that and think about how in our own lives we can express that same type of revolutionary love for African people. I think we had a... Okay. There is a question from Mona. I want to know how difficult that was for her and how she prepared herself in on taking this role. Can you hear that? I'll repeat. I'll how difficult it was for you and how did you prepare yourself for taking this role? Oh. Okay, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for all coming to see this film. Um, it's oh, really... Wow. Uh, it's a, it's a big passion of myself and my husband, and I'm really proud to see that we were all, we've all come to see it and that we're all interested in what we're doing. Um, and so thank you for myself and my husband. Um, how difficult was it to prepare? Um, for me, when I was presented with the role, I generally didn't even know much about what was going on in, or what had happened historically in, in Angola and Mozambique. Um, and so it meant having to do a lot of historical, going back basically and reading, um, reading and, 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 you know, just understanding really the struggles of these people. Being of Nigerian descent myself, um, we don't, sadly, don't learn much about other parts of Africa. Um, I don't know if anyone else um, has that same, um, experience but where we're from we literally just learn about ourselves and no one no one else so it meant having to see africa with fresh eyes um and it was really it was really quite tough because I, I, I a little bit ignorant actually that i hadn't known anything about these people that are so close to us in proximity and you know these are brothers and sisters and to know that um there was this struggle that i knew nothing about was quite humbling so it was it was it was very difficult at first, um, um, but once I got a grasp of what these people have experienced and are experiencing, because it still continues, um, I then it, it then I had to make it personal. I had to make I had to become uh, Mona and see um, her struggle, be, put myself in her shoes. Um, as a revolutionary and also as a human, because it is a love story as much as it is um, all about revolution. So it was really tough. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It's really tough, and also working for my husband and with my husband, who is so impressive and so he got his knowledge is so vast and so wide. So I really had to go far in order to as him as well. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, I think that that that. that uh, uh, yeah, it goes to say it was not an easy, easy task at all to prepare. Sorry, I'm fighting with the baby here. Yeah.
So I think with this story, I think it's clearly not something that Nollywood would love or maybe even Hollywood would love, you know, because of the messages that it sends to the, the people that finance films in bulk. So as far as opposition, opposition making it was, was, was the obvious, I couldn't get any money from any major company or film distribution company, sales company, uh, but when it came out is when I saw the most opposition. So, okay, so I don't want to go into too much detail. I don't want to cry in front of all of you people, but the reality is um, we, inv we were invited to a film festival in Lisbon. Everybody knows where Lisbon is? Portugal. Portugal, okay. And, thank <laughs> God we asked. We were invited to a film festival in Lisbon, and in fact, we had been through many different film festivals across Africa. Across Europe as well, we went to uh, Spain, we went to Italy, we went to Belgium, we went to Holland. Belgium. Very, yeah, thank you. We went to a few different film festivals. And um, a, there was one in Lisbon that we were invited to. Now the reality is, you see, when films like this, uh, you know, basically you have curators, people that bring films to different film festivals. And when they bring a film, it's up to a judging panel to decide whether that film is for them. So we experienced uh, even though we had been brought to it, and this also happened in London, where I live. London Film Festival, the, the curator also wanted the film, uh, and when it came time to it, all of a sudden, it got shut down. And, you know, this isn't something you, I, I didn't expect. I, ex I expected things like this to happen, but seeing it for the first time, that's when I saw that, you know, art is really something you have to be very careful about. It's very political, you have to be very sure about what you're doing. 
Now, the three. First, yeah, what do you see about the future? Okay, um, I mean, I'll tell you some of the stuff that I've done um, since then. So again, this film came out in 2016. We've gone around Africa with the film, thank God. Um, but I think since then, it's been very difficult to, to finance another film. So I actually have more of an interest in, um, when you talk about going forward, I have an interest more about telling people like yourselves, giving them access to information and history, historical facts. So I actually began last year doing a series of documentaries. I went to Dahomey, which is modern day Benin, uh, and I also went to Togo, and I did a documentary on Dahomey's, uh, the kingdom that ruled uh, from the 16th century up till uh, the French came, and voodoo, what they call voodoo, the voodoo system, the spiritual system, which really, had it not been for Europeans, we would have all been practicing in some capacity now, which we've been made to believe is evil. So I'm all about trying to overturn things like that. Earlier this year, I went to Mali, I shot a similar documentary, which is part documentary, part animation, which shows a chronology of history from Mali, of Mali over a thousand years. The various kingdoms. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of kingdoms of Mali, the different kingdoms, Songhai. Okay. Um, and um, hopefully in the, new, in the new year, myself and Dr. Campbell will be partnering on another documentary, which probably will be a seminal work for both of us, about the uh, African origin of ancient Kemet, which is regarded as Egypt. So these are some of the things that we're trying to do to influence people like yourselves. It's not always about entertainment, but we understand that that's crucial in order to keep you interested. So um, if you stayed to the end, I'm sure you were entertained. I'm, I hope maybe you may not have liked the ending, but the reality is you were entertained enough to stay and get a message out of it. And that's more important to me than, than any, anything else. Um. And really quick, I've been told there are about 50 people outside who are very angry and they want the second showing. So I think we may have to allow them in. Hmm? All right. So we'd like to thank all of you who have come in. So I saw a few hands up. Don't leave with your questions. Go on, we'll meet you outside when the second screening is going on for more interaction. Okay? Um, and also, a quick point, there's a banner up in front which has the film title on there. Please feel free to take pictures up in front and hashtag Mona, Mona Film, Mona Film Ghana um, on the YouTube.com as well as Twitter, Facebook, and whatnot. Thank you. I'm sorry, I missed that. Sitting there. I waited. I waited. I waited. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah the, and then was coming in. That's a typical thing. So the um, woman from Pakistan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, that looks. She looks different from Pakistan. She went for class. This one over here. Yeah, I really went to Chicago, and then it was like, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite intense. I mean, listening to the room to like react to it was also very nice. I'm wondering what we did right, so we have to use it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, hello, thank you all for coming in. We'll be starting a few of shows. We just wanted to mention that there is a banner up front that has like, a film title on there. Feel free to take pictures in front. And hashtag Mona Lisa. Um, you could do this on various social media networks. So YouTube as well as um, Also, I would want to mention that we've got a camera here, so that means that we're filming the location. Um, we are assuming that being here, we are consenting to having an image likeness as well as voice um, to be reproduced for the virtual world. Um, thank you very much. Ago, 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 the Mamajo, Fianami, yes, she a cool, I don't know the Hebrew. Yadu, oh, we gave her, we gave us a Ghana Queen. So when I say Ghana Queen, everybody say Wendu, okay? Ghana Queen, Wendu, Ghana Queen, Wendu, Wendu, Wendu. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd like to welcome all of you again. We thank you very much for your patience. 
Um, this is our first of the IES film series for uh, this year. Uh, this is the first of our IES film series for this year, and we'd like to thank everyone for coming out. This is an amazing film called Mona, and our director is, we're privileged to have him here. He flew in from the UK, then to Nigeria, and then flew into Ghana just for this uh, showing. As you know, yesterday the showing was so packed that we had to have a second showing last night and now a third showing today. So, you know, we are really amazed at the turnout. We really appreciate that. Uh, do you have anything? No. First of all, let me thank all of you. How many of you, just by a show of hands, were here yesterday and went back? Okay, a special, special thank you to all of you. You see, when you make a film, you hope that it could be well received. You, more importantly, you hope people see it. So even the fact that you guys thought enough of it to come back, it warms my heart. In fact, in our language, we say, um, which it means that my heart is filled with with joy and happiness that you could be here. Um, unfortunately, I'm probably not going to be here at the end for the Q&A because I have to catch a flight back to, to Nigeria and then um, wherever. So um, let me first of all tell you that I hope any questions you have, uh, Dr. Okamo will be able to answer because he knows everything about the film. Um, I think hopefully Mona will be available uh, via the internet, not in person, to answer some of the questions that, uh, that we have. But thank you very much. Medalsi. Avi? Medalsi. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. okay, and with no further ado, we'll get started with Mona. Um, just a quick one. We also have a camera here, so we're filming. So just know that once you are here, your image, likeness, and voice will be captured for virtual use. Thank you. Away from her, you know, from getting to from doing it. But I think what's implied at the very end is as the the leader is talking, there's another woman getting her gun loaded to attack this man so it doesn't end with her there are others like her so this story that i didn't even know about now i'm exposed to his is is being exposed all over instead of suppressed so in that in that the issue of gender i hope you you would see that you know this is actually bringing to light uh uh roles of women in uh, protecting their their own people uh, that we don't get to hear about. So, thank you, and I'm Kala Kambam. Thank you. Thank you, Kala and um, Dr. Peter. Um, Sorry, just to add to that, I think also it's important to note how um, even in these main roles, or even in these um, roles of, 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 of action and all of that, how women are represented and um, she specifically wasn't, the intention was not to sexualize her, to make her like this big, beautiful like woman that is wanted by all the men, like she was very simple, she was very plain, she was very average. So I think that's also very interesting to know, like in, in a lot of these like Marvel or DC action movies, you find like the women that are part of the 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 hero or the, the the activism team are very like are seen as these sex symbols. And I think it was cool that she she was just a normal plain woman. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. So, um, any other submissions also regarding the question as to how that was related to gender? Um, personally, for me too, like at the beginning of the uh, there's a white woman who keeps talking about assassins in um, specific like colonized areas in Africa and they, you know, she, she makes mention of like they've got women and women, you know, in these um, movements. So for me it actually like emphasizes the point that um, the independence fight was not just you know man's fight, but it was also like women, you know, also um, taking up weapons and then doing what they have to do with being independent. Um, 
many other thoughts. There's been uh, submissions. If you want to say something to the director, to you know, we got a camera rolling, so please feel free. We're definitely watching that. And, you know, yeah, I know you will feel happy. Yeah. In the absence of anything, I want to say thank you all very much um, for coming to see the IES film screenings. We used to do this every Thursday, but this semester we may do it like once a month. Um, so please feel free to keep an eye out and then watch out for the next film that will be screening here. And definitely do invite friends and bring people to this place of knowledge. Um, thank you all very much and have a wonderful night. Thank you.